Hello, I'm Rose from the Together Church and I wanted to read you a story today. Um, this story is called The 99th Sheep. Now, it's a story for children, but I think adults can appreciate it too. And the author, Meryl Donny, has said um, about the book, she said, Jesus told two very famous stories to show just how much God loves us. One we call the lost sheep, the other is usually known as the prodigal son. But it's really about two sons. One took his share of, the fa of his father's money and left home. The other stayed behind but was very jealous when his brother was welcomed back. And they say in this story, she's, they've mixed the two together and told them from the sheep's point of view. But Jesus' original message is still the same. So I thought I'd read it to you. You can use it as a bedtime story or you can just, just listen to it. Anyway. Oh, my poor feet, said Curly, as he limped down the track towards the fold. It had been a long, hot day on the hillsides outside Bethlehem. And every sheep was glad to see the grey stone walls of home. shove you pushed in ouch my hoof cried the sheep as they all tried to push through the doorway at once one two three the shepherd began his patient counting 65 66 67 his practiced eye picked out each sheep as it passed 96 97 98 99 heard curly as he limped in last Wait a minute, said the shepherd. 98, 99. Someone's missing. It's not me. I'm here, said Curly. The shepherd turned to look back up the track. Already the sun had dipped behind the hill. The path was empty. Judah, Ben, help me count again, he called to his two sons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 98, 99. It's Daisy, said Curly. Bah, trust Daisy, said another sheep. Always trouble, came several more bleats. It's Daisy, I think, father, said Judah. The shepherd sighed. You know what to do, boys, he said to his, to his sons. He hitched his water bottle back onto his shoulder, took up his crooked stick, and set wearily off up the track. The sheep settled down to sleep. Move over, I haven't any room. You've heaps of room, you're too fat. No, I'm not. Mind my hoof, clumsy. Look at the sheep. They're counting shepherds as they go to sleep. Judah pulled his cloak around his shoulders and settled himself in the gap in the wall, making himself into a human door. Ben set out for the village to ask for help. When Ben arrived in the village, everyone was preparing for the evening meal. He went to the neighbour's house. Please, can you help us? One of our sheep is missing, he begged. It's Daisy. Daisy, everyone laughed. Not again. Out on the mountainside, Daisy looked up from the clump of grass she was munching. That's funny, she thought. Where is everyone? She scanned the empty path. The tips of the hills were glowing pink in the last rays of the setting sun. There was no sign of the flock, the boys or the shepherd. A moment later, the sun dropped behind the mountains and the world was dark. Bah! Daisy bleated in alarm. Where are you, shepherd? 
without stopping to think. She began to run uphill. The path narrowed into a track. Thorns scratched her legs. Suddenly, the path disappeared, a lot altogether. Help! she bleated as she fell head over heels. Ouch! as the brambles caught her. Bah! as she landed on a narrow ledge. Help! she wailed, but her voice echoed away down the valley in the darkness. There she is on the ledge, look. The night was just turning to grey morning when Daisy heard a tiny sound. Was it a voice calling? High above her, two vultures began circling. Oh, look. And began circling, circling lazily. Vultures love young sheep to eat. Daisy froze with fear. Then she heard the sound again. It was nearer this time and definitely a voice. Ba called Daisy. Ba as loud as she possibly could. There you are, the shepherd. The shepherd's face, tired and hot, broke into a delighted smile as he peered over the cliff. Swiftly, he scrambled down to the ledge and began to pull back, his, pull back the thorns. Soon have you out of there, Daisy, he said, as he worked. Finally, he lifted her up in his strong arms, slung her onto his shoulders and began the long trek home. Daisy closed her eyes. She was safe. Back in the fold, the sheep were restless. It's not fair, moaned Curly. All this fuss over Daisy. She's always dreaming and wandering off. Yes, said another sheep. She's just greedy, if you ask me. Serves her right if she gets lost, if she is lost. Would you like to be alone and lost on the hillside at night? asked a kindly old ewe. Curly looked up at the sky. He could see two vultures circling in the distance. He shivered. Ooh. The sun was just coming up behind the fold when Curly heard the familiar whistle. The sheep who had been huddled together dozing stirred and looked up. Striding down the path came the shepherd, and there, on his shoulders, they could just see the small, woolly outline of Daisy. I found her, the shepherd called to his sons. Is she okay? Yes, she's fine. A bit scratched. She was caught in the brambles. The boys ran to meet their father. The shepherd grinned his happiness from ear to ear. Go and get your mother and the neighbours, he chuckled as he set Daisy down gently in the fold. We'll have a breakfast celebration. There they are. Breakfast celebration. The sheep were not so delighted to see Daisy. Stupid, said one as she limped forward, causing so much trouble. It's not fair, said Curly loudly. All this fuss over Daisy, we've been here all the time. We didn't get lost, but Daisy gets the party. Shepherd's favourite. There was a long silence. Finally, the old ewe walked over to the miserable Daisy and licked her nose. He's a good shepherd, she said. He cares for every one of us. I wouldn't, it wouldn't matter 
If it was me or you or Curly, if we were lost, he'd come looking for us. That's just how he is. What a celebration breakfast they had that morning. The shepherd's wife brought newly baked bread. The boys carried water bottles and wineskins. The neighbours added figs, cheese and olives. And the shepherd played his pipes. There he is. Can you see him playing his pipes there? <laughs> Daisy kept close to the shepherd. And so did Curly, the 99th sheep. The shepherd bent down and patted them both on their woolly heads. There, he said gently, this party is for everyone. There you go. I hope you enjoyed it. That's it, the 99th sheep. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.